The Artsakh Republic, or the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, is a sovereign state which was formed as the USSR began to disintegrate. The capital of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic is Stepanakert. The Nagorno-Karabakh Republic shares borders with Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Iran. Since ancient times, Artsakh was one of the provinces of historical Armenia mentioned in the works of Strabo, Pliny the Elder, Claudius, Ptolemy, Plutarch, Dio Cassius, and other ancient authors. After the division of the Kingdom of Greater Armenia in 387 AD, Artsakh became part of the Eastern Armenian Kingdom, which soon fell under the domination of Persia. In this period of Arabic rule, it was still part of the Armenian region. Between the 9th and 11th centuries, Artsakh was part of the Armenian Kingdom of Bagratids, then between the 12th and 13th centuries, part of Zakarid Armenia. During the following centuries, Artsakh fell under Persian rule once again, having a semi-independent status. It was governed by Armenian Meliks, hereditary feudal lords who had managed to preserve de facto sovereignty with total independence in internal matters such as the court system, tax collection, and the right to have its own army. Despite the neighboring Muslim population of Iran and the Turkic tribes that had been arriving in the region since the 11th century, Artsakh continued to remain predominantly Armenian populated. The ethnic map started to change during the middle of the 18th century when Turkic nomadic tribes began entering the north of Artsakh, leading to clashes with the indigenous Armenian population. Since then, another name for the region was put into use, Karabakh. In the 1750s, taking advantage of the internal strife between Karabakh Meliks and with the support of the Armenian Melik of Veranda, Shah Nazar II, Pana, a leader of one of the Turkic nomadic tribes, managed to settle within the fortress of Shushi. He proclaimed Karabakh a Khanate and himself as its Khan and attempted to extend its rule over Karabakh. This marked the beginning of a lengthy war with the Armenian Meliks. As a result of the Russian-Persian Wars during 1804 to 1813 and later between 1826 to 1828, first Artsakh Karabakh and then all of Eastern Armenia was incorporated into the Russian Empire. During the collapse of the Russian Empire in 1918 to 1920, Nagorno-Karabakh turned into a theater of brutal war between Armenia, which restored its independence, and Azerbaijan, which was newly created due to the military intervention of Turkey. The newly founded country of Azerbaijan laid territorial claims over considerable parts of Armenian territories in the South Caucasus, including Karabakh, giving rise to Azerbaijani-Karabakh conflict. Taking advantage of the turmoil caused by World War I and the collapse of the Russian Empire, Regular Turkish troops and Azerbaijani armed formations carried out a massacre of Armenians in Baku between 1918 and 1920 as a continuation of the 1915 Armenian Genocide in Turkey. But in Nagorno-Karabakh, the Turkish and Azerbaijani troops faced serious armed resistance. Nevertheless, on the 23rd of March 1920, Shushi was burned and plundered and the Armenian population was massacred. It was at this time when the international community found it necessary to intervene in the conflict, which was becoming increasingly more bloody. In response to the territorial claims of Azerbaijan, on December 1, 1920, the League of Nations rejected ascension of Azerbaijan and recognized Nagorno-Karabakh as a disputed territory before the final settlement of the issue. All parties involved in the conflict agreed on this. Thus, during the formation of Azerbaijan in 1918, its sovereignty did not extend to Nagorno-Karabakh, which at the time was governed by Armenian national councils. In April 1920, the Red Army arrived in the South Caucasus. After establishing Soviet rule in Azerbaijan on April 28, 1920, the Red Army took control of Karabakh and declared it a disputed territory. With the proclamation of Soviet rule in Armenia on November 30, 1920, the government of Soviet Azerbaijan announced the end of territorial disputes with Armenia and recognized Nagorno-Karabakh as an integral part of Soviet Armenia. However, during discussions on delimitation of the internal boundaries of the Transcaucasian republics, the Azerbaijani leadership, with the support of Joseph Stalin, the People's Commissar for Nationalities, again raised the issue of the status of Karabakh. On the 4th of July, 1921, the plenum of the Caucasian Bureau of Central Committee of the Russian Communist Party of Bolsheviks adopted a decree on the inclusion of Nagorno-Karabakh into Soviet Armenia. On the next day, the 5th of July, there was another meeting of the plenum, which under pressure from Joseph Stalin, canceled its previous decree and decided to leave Nagorno-Karabakh within the Azerbaijani SSR, granting it a broad regional autonomy. On the 7th of July, 1923, after two years of delays, the Azerbaijani Central Executive Committee declared autonomy in the Armenian part of Nagorno-Karabakh. Its boundaries were subsequently drawn in such a way which left out substantial parts of Nagorno-Karabakh. The rest of the Armenian populated territory was repeatedly redrawn and up until 1988 formed part of various regions of the Azerbaijani SSR. Only the Shahumyan region remained as a separate administrative unit, 
According to the census of 1926, 111,700 Armenians lived in the autonomous region, while northern Artsakh, which was left out of the boundaries of the autonomous region, had a population of more than 50,000 Armenians. In order to separate Nagorno-Karabakh from Armenia, in 1923, the authorities of the Azerbaijani SSR set up a Kurdish region, Red Kurdistan, with its administrative center in Lachin, Berzor. Six years later, in 1929, the Kurdish region was abolished and its constituent territories became separate administrative units of the Azerbaijani SSR. During the entire period that the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region remained within the Azerbaijani SSR, the Azerbaijani leaders pursued a deliberate policy of ousting the Armenian population, systematically violating their rights and hindering the economic development of the region. In the 1950s, per capita investments in the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region accounted for 10 times less than the average in Azerbaijan. Beginning in the 1970s, intensive development of Azerbaijani settlements in the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region was enhanced. But even with this, per capita investments in the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region between 1981 and 1985 were half the average of Azerbaijan, and in 1986, more than 2.7 times less. However, discrimination was most acute in the national and cultural spheres. Numerous Armenian churches in the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh were completely closed, while mosques continued to operate. The Armenian language was practically excluded from official spheres, the number of Armenian schools was reduced, and there were virtually no textbooks in Armenian. Such policies resulted in a demographic shift towards a migratory increase of the Azerbaijani minority. Between 1926 and 1979, an average of about 2,000 Armenians annually immigrated from Nagorno-Karabakh, while the Azerbaijani population increased by approximately 1,000 people per year beginning in the 1950s. Between 1926 and 1979, the Armenian population of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region increased little, from 111,700 to only 123,100, while the Azerbaijani population increased from 12,600 to 37,200. Between 1926 and 1980, 85 Armenian settlements in Nagorno-Karabakh ceased to exist, around 27% of the total number. In response to the discriminatory policies of Azerbaijan, the Armenian population of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region voiced its demand to secede from Azerbaijan and reunite with Armenia. This idea was always alive in the population of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region, and any chance of articulating it would immediately take the form of a massive movement, which was always legal and peaceful in nature. The current stage of the national liberation movement of the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh began in 1988. Starting on February 13, 1988, Mass rallies involving tens of thousands of people were held in the capital, Stepanakert. On February 20, 1988, an extraordinary session of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region, Council of People's Deputies, which was the Parliament of the Autonomy, requested that the Supreme Soviets of the Azerbaijani SSR and the Armenian SSR resolve the issue of the transfer of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region from the Azerbaijani SSR to the Armenian SSR. In response to the demand of the Armenian population of Nagorno-Karabakh to exercise their right to self-determination, a wave of government-organized pogroms against Armenians took place in Azerbaijan, which included murder, rape, and looting of an unprecedented brutality. As a result of the pogroms, hundreds of Armenians were murdered and thousands more were maimed. More than 450,000 people were expelled from their homes and became refugees. Over 30,000 of them found refuge in Nagorno-Karabakh and still live there today. In an effort to finally resolve the Nagorno-Karabakh issue by force, between April and August 1991, the Azerbaijani authorities, with the support of the USSR Interior Ministry troops and the Soviet Army, carried out a large-scale military and police operation known as Ring, aimed at the deportation of the Armenian population in the border villages of Artsakh. This was a prelude to the subsequent full-scale aggression by Azerbaijan against the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. As a result of the operation, more than two dozen villages in northern Artsakh, as well as the Shahumyan, Hadrut, and Shushi regions, were completely devastated and destroyed. Nearly 10,000 people were deported, over 100 more killed, and several hundred people were taken hostage. In March 1991, the European Parliament, and then in May 1991, the U.S. Senate, adopted resolutions condemning the use of force against the population of Karabakh and called for an end to the blockade and other forms of force and intimidation directed against Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. However, only the failure of the attempted military coup in Moscow in August of 1991 put an end to the deportations. 
In late August 1991, the Parade of Sovereignties of the Soviet Republics began. On September 2, 1991, the joint session of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region and the Shahumyan region's deputies of all levels proclaimed the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, based on Soviet law, was on the procedures for resolving issues related to the secession of Union Republics from the USSR. On the 10th of December, 1991, a referendum on independence was held in the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, in which 99.89% of those who took part in the referendum voted for independence. The Azerbaijani population of Nagorno-Karabakh, under the pressure of Baku, boycotted the referendum, supporting and taking an active part in the aggression against the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, unleashed by the Azerbaijani authorities. On the day of the referendum, Stepanakert and other Armenian settlements were fired at. Ten civilians were killed and eleven more were wounded. On January 6, 1992, the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic Supreme Council adopted a declaration on state independence of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and thus legally reinstated both the results of the referendum and the previously adopted legal acts in which the right of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh to determine their own political status was exercised. The political processes in Nagorno-Karabakh were met by yet another escalation of violence by Azerbaijan. Beginning in the autumn of 1991, the Azerbaijani armed forces started firing rockets on Stepanakert and other settlements. In 1992, Azerbaijan started using multiple rocket launch systems, combat aircraft, and heavy weaponry. A full-scale war broke out, which was accompanied by numerous violations of international humanitarian laws and crimes against the civilian population of Nagorno-Karabakh, being committed by the Azerbaijani army. One of the most tragic episodes of the Azerbaijani aggression against the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic was the unprecedentedly brutal massacre in the Armenian village of Marhaga, in the region of Martagert. On the 10th of April, 1992, after heavy artillery shelling, the Azerbaijani armed units invaded the village. A small group of local defense forces had managed to evacuate most of the people from the village. However, 118 people, mostly the elderly, disabled, women and children, remained in the village. Many of them were brutally massacred by Azerbaijani soldiers. More than 50 people, including 30 women, were victims of this war crime. The escalation of military offenses made organization and improvement of defenses a necessity for the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. To this end, self-defense units were set up on a voluntary basis throughout the country. These units were soon formed into a regular army. On May 9, 1992, the Karabakh army succeeded in liberating the city of Shushi, and a couple of days later, on May 18, established a corridor linking Artsakh with Armenia through the region of Berzor, or Lachin. Soon, however, the situation at the front deteriorated sharply for the Nagorno-Karabakh forces. This was due to the fact that in May 1992, the Azerbaijani army obtained military equipment and armaments from the former Soviet army, stationed in the territory of Azerbaijan. In violation of international law, Azerbaijan attracted thousands of foreign mercenaries from Chechnya, Afghanistan, Turkey, and the CIS countries to participate in the hostilities as part of its armed forces. Engaging mercenaries in the conflict zone further contributed to the transformation of Azerbaijan into a transit country for drug trafficking to Europe and Russia, as well as a transit point for terrorists and terrorist activities and their subsidies. After receiving multiple advantages in terms of military equipment, on June 12, 1992, The Azerbaijani army, with the participation of units of the former 4th Soviet Army, stationed in Azerbaijan, launched a large-scale offensive and occupied the Shahumyan region, most of the Martagert region and parts of the Martuni and Askeran regions. In total, around 48% of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic territory came under Azerbaijani occupation, and nearly 66,000 people were internally displaced. After regrouping, the forces of the Nagorno-Karabakh Defense Army succeeded in stopping the advance of the Azerbaijani army by the autumn of 1992 and reached a breakthrough at the front line in 1993. During the spring-autumn of 1993, the Karabakh army had inflicted upon the Azerbaijani army a series of heavy defeats along the Kalbajar, Agdam, Fizuli, Kubatli, Zangalan, Jebrail line and was able to ensure secure borders for the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. At the initial stage, the search for a peaceful settlement of the Azerbaijani Karabakh conflict was being conducted in parallel by a number of mediators Russia, Kazakhstan, Iran, the CIS, and the OSCE. During the period of active hostilities, the efforts of the mediators were directed to establishing a lasting and durable ceasefire. To the same end, in 1993, the UN Security Council adopted four resolutions on Nagorno Karabakh. The first and main requirement of those resolutions was an immediate ceasefire, cessation of all hostilities and hostile acts. It is these basic requirements of all four resolutions that to date have been repeatedly violated and ignored by Azerbaijan. 
the failure of Azerbaijan to comply with both the main and various other requirements of the four UN Security Council resolutions, its bet on a military solution, unwillingness to secure peace, and constant threats of resuming military hostilities, have devalued the mentioned resolutions and made them inapplicable. On May 12, 1994, an agreement on the ceasefire and cessation of hostilities signed by the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, the Azerbaijani Republic, and the Republic of Armenia, by mediation of the Russian Federation, came into effect. The agreement was preceded by several rounds of direct talks between the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and Azerbaijan, including talks at the highest level. As a result of those direct contacts, about 10 bilateral agreements were signed between Azerbaijan and Nagorno-Karabakh on the limitation of military operations and temporary ceasefire or its extension, which paved the way for achieving the 1994 ceasefire agreement. On July 26 through the 27th, 1994, military leaders of the NKR, Azerbaijan, and Armenia confirmed their commitments under the ceasefire until the conclusion of a large political agreement. On February 6, 1995, a trilateral agreement on strengthening the ceasefire was signed under the auspices of the OSCE. These agreements remain to this day the only real achievement in the process of a peaceful settlement of the Azerbaijani Karabakh conflict. Concluding the 1994 unlimited, in time trilateral ceasefire agreement allowed mediators to focus on negotiating a final settlement to the Azerbaijani Karabakh conflict. In December 1994, the Minsk Group co chairmanship was established at the OSCE summit in Budapest to consolidate the efforts of Russia and the OSCE. The Budapest summit also confirmed the trilateral format of the negotiations. Full fledged talks with representatives of the Nagorno Karabakh Republic, Armenia, and Azerbaijan were held until the negotiations were thwarted by Azerbaijan in April 1997. In 1997, a triple co chairmanship of the OSCE Minsk Group, represented by Russia, the United States, and France, was established. In April 1999, direct talks between the parties of the conflict resumed in a curtailed format without the direct participation of the Nagorno Karabakh Republic. Negotiations in this format have been taking place to this day. In the absence of full fledged negotiations, to continue the dialogue, the co-chairs of the OSCE Minsk Group periodically visit the region and meet with the authorities of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. Lack of real progress in the peaceful settlement of the Azerbaijani-Karabakh conflict is due to the obvious unwillingness of Azerbaijan to negotiate a settlement. This is evidenced by First, Azerbaijan's military buildup, rejection of any confidence-building initiatives to strengthen the ceasefire, policy of isolation of Nagorno-Karabakh, official anti-Armenian propaganda, animity, and militarism. Second, the refusal of Azerbaijan to participate in full-fledged trilateral negotiations with the direct and full participation of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. The only achievement in the settlement process of the Azerbaijani-Karabakh conflict has been the ceasefire agreements, signed with full participation of all three conflicting parties, Azerbaijan, the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, and Armenia. The settlement process requires a restoration of negotiations, in order to find a final solution to the conflict within this trilateral format. The culmination of Azerbaijan's aggressive policy after the 1994 ceasefire was the large-scale offensive against the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic on April 2, 2016, with the use of heavy equipment, artillery, and aerial combat. Azerbaijan, after severing heavy losses in manpower and equipment, asked for a cessation of hostilities and a return to the ceasefire agreement of the 12th of May, 1994, through the mediation of the Russian Federation. The unwillingness to find a peaceful solution to the Azerbaijani-Karabakh conflict and the aggressive policy of Azerbaijan, which denies the people of Nagorno-Karabakh of their right to life and peaceful development, indicate that there is no alternative to the international recognition of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, a viable state with all the attributes and institutions of statehood, its own constitution, a vibrant civil society, and a dynamic economy.